Hello. Hi. Welcome to Drinking the Kool Aid. Welcome. I'm your host, Megan. I'm Hannah. Okay, do you want to hear the story of <laughs> the bagel flop? Sorry, literally, dude. I cannot right now. <laughs> it's you like that the show Home Improvement. <laughs> the freaking next door neighbor that's always like got his head peeking over the fence, just his eyes. That's what you look like right now. <laughs> we have a Straight new up. contraption right now. I um basically built like these little boxes <laughs> with foam <laughs> in them and microphones are in there and we're trying uh something different. So Dude, I can't stop looking <laughs> over at you because all I see is your eyeballs. It's so freaking funny. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm sorry. I did not mean to interrupt. Anyways, mm-hmm. um, there's something about a bagel. The bagel drop. The bagel drop. Okay. Okay. So I was having a morning. Oh. And I... Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, this is not starting out good. So I made a bagel and then I was heading to work, you know, outside my bedroom door. <laughs> <laughs> and... uh Clearly, that was too much to handle. So I put Nutella on the bagel. And. Oh, not the Nutella! It goes whap face down on the carpet. On the carpet. And so there's this big brown circle smear on the carpet. And it was really, it pissed me off, of course. But the best part of what came out of this was I couldn't clean it up because I had to start work. And I was like, okay, I'll deal with it later. All of the cats for the entire day would come down the stairs and they'd see the spot on the carpet and they would all slink around it. (laughs) Nobody would walk in the middle of the hallway for the rest of the day. (laughs) Oh, no. And I just kept seeing the cats like, squishing up against the wall to go to the other like into the storage room and stuff Uh, it was hilarious i mean if it makes you feel any better i dumped water all over my own face does that make you feel a little better um i mean a little bit i was trying to take my meds and i just dumped it all over my face sure yep my mouth was closed didn't think that one through oh yeah i already had water in there Mm -hmm. yep but out of habit, I just went to take a sip and, yep. Okay. So at least you didn't start your day like that. Right. <laughs> uh, okay. Well. Well, what? <laughs> I guess I didn't have anything. Oh, my God. And I just watch your eyeballs, like, look at the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there's something else, but I don't know what it was. <laughs> Can Never mind. This setup is the best. <laughs> this is my favorite one yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, we have a lot of different setups that we go through. This is my favorite one. <laughs> this really is. Yeah, at least we're getting further away from each other. That's nice. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, that's real nice. <laughs> I mean, it is nice not standing like weenus to weenus with you yeah that is very enjoyable that i'm not doing that any longer <laughs> yeah because your weenus gets really sweaty <laughs> yours does <laughs> what are you talking about your weenus no it does not get sweaty that's weird why why <laughs> <laughs> why did you just make that a thing um because you let me you know, i'm gonna be like <laughs> Nervous about my weenus is sweating. Yeah. Okay. Hey, don't look at me, man. <laughs> look away. Eyes back in the box. Look away. <laughs> okay. Yeah, put your eyes back in the damn box. <laughs> wow. Those eyes are out. Let me tell you a story. Okay. All right. Tracy Kirkpatrick was a quiet... I didn't say her name right. <laughs> <laughs> that was rude. <laughs> and it's not even like a complex name either. It's the first damn sentence. <laughs> it like once it computed, I was like, nope, that's not her name. <laughs> oh man, okay. Okay. Try again. Tracy Kirkpatrick 
was a quiet teenager. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Stop it. You overpronunciated. That's so hard. <laughs> Do you want me to try again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, let me try to put it all together. <laughs> Tracy Kirkpatrick was a quiet teenager who lived in the small town of Frederick, Maryland. She had a passion for writing poetry, was very intelligent, and a hard worker. She absolutely loved people and had a lot of friends. Those who knew Tracy say that she was funny and had a feisty attitude. She loved to blast the radio. Wait for it. You're going to like this. Oh. In her 10-year-old Pontiac Grand Prix. Hey, nice. (laughs) Yes, I love that. You are correct. Uh Uh-huh. Um, we are both Grand Prix girls. 100%. If, <laughs> seriously, if Pontiac came back, I'd jump on that shit so quick. Oh, I would get me another Grand Prix. Immediately. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. She tended to be reserved and shy, but was also compassionate and loved animals and would often take in strays from the neighborhood. Uh... <laughs> That doesn't sound like anybody. Hmm. (laughs) Tracy was an honor student, and her poetry was often about loneliness, and one was published in the New American Poetry Anthology. After graduation, Tracy was going to attend St. Mary's University to study accounting with the hopes of getting into law school later. Okay, so before we get too far... Okay. I just want to mention that Tracy's name is actually spelled different in, like, every article. Nobody can agree on the actual spelling. Oh, for real? Yeah. So it's really confusing. It is either spelled with an E or without an E. Okay. But I will say the one that I saw the most and was used in, like, some of the documentaries is with an E. Got it. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Pretty sure it's Tracy with an E. Yes. Uh, But in our resources, they're all different. Well, yeah, (laughs) that tends to happen. um, Also, I think in my notes, I started typing it different, too, because I was so confused. I mean, honestly, it's easy to do that when you're doing research. Yes. Okay. Now, let's talk about the incident. The incident. All right, so uh, first we'll start with when Tracy was a senior in high school, she worked two part-time jobs. Now, one of her jobs was as a sales clerk in a clothing store called Eileen Lady Sportswear. On the night of March 15th, 1989, Tracy was scheduled to close the store, and she was also in charge of adding up the receipts for the day. Now, the timeline is slightly different depending on which article you read, but I'll give you the one that's cited the most. At about 6 p.m., Tracy's mother, Diane, stopped by the store and found Tracy alone. She was reading a book. Diane dropped off dinner and the two chatted for a few minutes. Tracy told her mom that she would be heading straight to bed after she got home that night. Me too. (laughs) (laughs) Around 8 p.m., Tracy's manager stopped by the store for a while, and there were no other transactions logged on the register after this point. Tracy was left alone in the store at about 8.45 p.m., and this was just 15 minutes before closing time. Around 10.30 p.m., A security guard noticed that the lights were still on in the store and the front door was unlocked. The guard called out, but did not get a response, so he went inside to check things out. Uh Uh-oh. The guard discovered Tracy's lifeless body in a back storage room and called the police right away. Around 11 p.m., Tracy's parents headed towards the mall. They were getting concerned because their daughter was late and should have arrived home over an hour ago. Tracy had recently had some issues with her car and the battery was dying. Ugh, same with that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not for me, but you can keep that. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah. 
Her parents worried that her car maybe broke down or she was just sitting somewhere waiting for someone to help jump it. So when they got to the store, they saw red and blue lights flashing all over the parking lot. God, my heart would just drop straight through my ass if I, I was just going to say that. right in your butt. Yeah. That's how it goes with those kind of situations. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Tracy's parents thought, OK, maybe the store was robbed. Her mother approached an officer and said, quote, is she all right? Can I see her? Oh. And when he shook his head, no, I just blocked out everything. I didn't want to hear the rest of what was being said to me. Did someone have it against her so much that they would do something like that to her? She never did anything to hurt anybody. End quote. Investigators say there was no sign of a struggle or sexual assault. The door had been forced open. Uh, no, that's not true. What? <laughs> the door had not. I forgot to type not. Oh. <laughs> At least you caught it. Yeah, that would have been stupid. <laughs> okay. The door had not been forced open. So somebody went into the store before Tracy locked up for the night. The cash receipts were still sitting on the counter and the money was in the cash register. Tracy's purse was missing, and there were blood droplets in the back hallway that led to the store's loading dock and trash cans. A weapon was not found, but the wounds did indicate that it was a knife used in the murder. Tracy didn't appear to have any defensive wounds, so it's believed that she knew her killer and possibly trusted them. Unfortunately, the investigators did not subpoena the phone records before the phone company erased them. Of course. It's believed that Tracy was likely killed between 8 p.m. when her manager stopped by and 10.30 p.m. when her body was discovered by the security guard, Don Barnes Jr. There were 22 stab wounds in Tracy's body, and they were in multiple locations on her head, neck, arms, back, and chest. That is awful. Yeah. There were three stab wounds in her head that resulted in multiple skull fractures, and there were two stab wounds that punctured vital organs in her right chest. Okay, but actually the amount of force that it's got to take to stab someone in the head has got to be insane. Right? And not only did they stab them, but they caused fractures. Yes. I cannot imagine the strength of that person. And they caught one of her lungs. Ooh. So she ended up dying from massive internal bleeding and trauma from her injuries. And according, this was according to an autopsy report that was released to the Frederick News Post. This case was confusing right off the bat. Police just couldn't figure out what the motive was for this murder. Three months after the murder, they finally got their first break. But it's a weird one. A guy named Don called a nationwide confession hotline and confessed to the murder. So I'm going to play that for you. Wait, there's a nationwide confession line? Yeah, I guess. Can you freaking imagine the shit that they get? Oh my god, that would be awesome. Hello, my name is Don, and I'm calling from Frederick, Maryland. I know this is going to sound surprising, but three months ago, I stabbed the girl to death. And you might think that in making this tape, I'm setting myself up to be caught, but there are a lot of guys named Don in Frederick. The girl I killed was working in a lady's sportswear store. I often came by and talked to her when she was working alone. And one night when she was in the storeroom and we were talking, our conversation turned into an argument. And so I took out a knife that I had with me at all times. Uh, 
Thanks for listening. I'm sorry about what I did, but nothing can change the fun. Oh my god. That was super creepy. Yeah, so uh, it's like it makes me really aggravated because if you were to think for a second, like, okay, this is the real killer calming in, and he's just like so dismissive about it. Yeah. And like, oh yeah, I used to go in and we'd chat, you know, whenever she was alone in her store. And I can't really change anything or bring her back. So I'm just not going to tell you who I am or do anything about it. Right. And not only that, but he's just like, well, sorry for what I did. Yeah. It's so cold and so gross. So uh, I don't know. I When I first heard it, I was like, oh, please don't even let this be the real person. I mean, I don't know what you expect because whoever did it is disgusting and cold. But it just, I don't know. It really hit me wrong yeah i am like really creeped out over here to be honest like yeah. i was super grossed out too mm -hmm. and at first i was like well that would be such a cool job because you can can you imagine the confessions and then i heard that and i'm like mm, never mind i don't want that yep <laughs> i uh i'm gonna do 180 on that okay yep i don't know i can't imagine like the first thing that the police were thinking either on that I honestly don't know. I guess for me, it would just be, like, incredibly frustrating because you hear it and you're like, you could be right the fuck there. Yeah. But who the shit are you? Right. Exactly. And so for the police, on October 10th, 1989, they decided to write a letter to the caller. And this was published to the front page of the Frederick News Post. It says, quote, I am personally willing to work with you to resolve this tragic situation, and I pray you now will come forward to relieve the hurt which Tracy's family and friends have suffered, as well as the pain which has consumed your life since that night, end quote. So the uh, tip was, of course, sent over to the police, and they believe that they were listening to the killer. The call was traced back to the supermarket, which was eight miles away in Walkersville, Maryland, on October 24th, just two weeks later. Frederick police received a call from a woman named Martha Woodworth. She told the police that she was a psychic and had been contacted by a young man who said his name was Sean. Martha said Sean contacted her repeatedly and was obsessed with finding the person who murdered Tracy. She asked Sean to provide more information, and he sent her newspaper clippings of the crime. Martha said, quote, When I received the envelope with his handwriting on the outside, I thought, this person has a much stronger involvement than just being a friend who's interested. I found the handwriting extremely disturbing. So I felt it was my responsibility to alert the police that I had a potential suspect for them. Whoa. End quote. So the police felt that, of course, there could be a connection as well with this. They decided to play the confession tape that they had received for uh, from that hotline. Yep. They played this for Martha. And she knew the voice right oh, away. God. She said, quote, I knew it was Sean. My heart dropped. It was very chilling to hear the voice of the person that I'd been speaking to for months. Holy actually shit. Actually confessing to the crime. End quote. Holy shit. Yeah. The return address on Sean's envelope was for Walkersville, Maryland. This is the same town that the calling confession came from. Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. Now the police are like, okay, let's get a little creative here. On the one-year anniversary of Tracy's murder, they gave the confession tape to four local DJs, and they had them broadcast it. <gasps> and what? you know what? Three people called in and said, I know that voice. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah. 
and they all provided the same exact name. What? Uh Uh-huh. The police recognized the name because it belonged to the guy that sent the newspaper clippings. The very next day, police were at this guy's home with a search warrant, searching for evidence. They found newspaper clippings and materials related to the case and also obtained a DNA sample. Now, to be clear, the person's name hasn't actually been released. Oh, okay. And they've been cleared as a suspect. Why well, are you fucking kidding me? No. Okay. How could you? How? They literally have his voice confessing it. Basically... The case was taken to a grand jury indictment based on the evidence, and the jury did not find probable cause for the charges. So this person was ultimately ruled out as a suspect. Did not find probable cause? Yeah. Don't they just have to have them talk and listen to recording (laughs) at the same time? I mean, you can't necessarily prove that they had anything to do with it, though, and maybe that's what they were getting at. They also ended up ruling out Tracy's ex-boyfriend during this process as well. The police have tried different strategies over the years to figure out who did this. I know who did it! (laughs) Sergeant Andrew Alcorn with the Frederick Police Department says, quote, Instead of just one detective putting a set of eyes on it, we would take the most experienced detectives in the unit, four or five of them, and have all of them look at the case together and develop new ideas, new leads, end quote. Or old ideas. (laughs) Sergeant Alcorn explains that the group is still interviewing suspects and looking at new ways to evaluate and collect the evidence. They feel confident that they'll be able to find the killer. He also stated that this is the first time in a decade that they've assembled a group to work a homicide together, which I got to tell you, I didn't know that they didn't do that as like a group activity. I was just going to say, actually, though, why don't they? Because would they not (laughs) find more killers and shit if they're working together as a group? I don't know. I would. I don't know how it works, obviously, but logically, you would think it would be better to have more sets of eyes on it, but maybe not. I mean, what do we know, right? I don't know. (laughs) Technology keeps advancing, and it's given the police the opportunity to apply new science to the evidence that they're holding on to. They are going back and interviewing their former officers that worked the case and the ones that were at the department store with Tracy. They're hoping to uncover new clues. Yeah. (laughs) Or old clues. You're very stuck on that one. I really am, dude. Uh, I mean, it's just like your voice, like, Mm -hmm. you know, everybody like says it's it's the the same person. The fact that they broadcasted it and multiple people called in and specifically said it's this person, like, Mm -hmm. there's not many voices that I can recognize, like, at the drop of a dime, like, no big deal. Like, if I hear them coming, a lot of times I'll have to turn and look at who it is. Mm-hmm. There's a couple, though, that stick in there, and that's just crazy that that voice stuck in their, like, minds enough that multiple people called and said it was this person. Oh, no, I absolutely agree. That's and crazy. I I am very I stuck mean, on that. I it could I'm be sorry. somebody that's, like, confessing that had no- nothing to do and with it, it though. And, and it could be. It totally could be. But... It's just very strange that a person that was so closely involved, because they know, you know, people that are Mm -hmm. right there in it, it's just weird. Yes. It's very weird. I'm just saying. I wonder if it was a setup. And I'll tell you why. The person that called the hotline said their name was Don. Then the person that calls the psychic says that their name is Sean. But from my research, even though they didn't release the name, there was one article that said that the person at the house that it ultimately led back to was not Sean and was not Don. <laughs> so not I'm Sean, not Don. kind of wondering if it's somebody that was that maybe knew who the actual person was and was trying to point them in that direction. Because... 
the first person on the suspect list, okay. as far as theories goes, is named Don. What? Okay. So the main theory is that the security guard that found Tracy's body, Don Barnes Jr., is the actual murderer. For real? Uh-huh. According to his daughter, he was actually really abusive, and she believes that he did kill her. Whoa. And I'm just saying, if the daughter thinks it, there's a good chance that there's something going on there. Also, his father was a former sheriff Uh. (laughs) with Frederick County, and it suggested that there was a cover-up. Whoa. Yeah. The second uh, thing that I found on here was that there was actually a detective that worked the case from 1992 to 1994, and he believed that it was an acquaintance of Tracy's that was the actual killer. He believed that this person visited the store on the night of the murder and maybe confessed his feelings for Tracy, but then things turned oh, violent. Didn't go well. Yeah, because she maybe said like, "Hey, just want to be friends, buddy." Right. Um, and they didn't like that. The detective says that he brought the case to a grand jury and two thirds voted to indict, but the state's attorney's office declined to prosecute because of the circumstantial evidence. Some people believe that Tracy was actually a victim of the I 70 killer. This was an unknown serial killer. Uh, suspected of killing six store clerks in the Midwestern United States. But this was between 1992 and 1994. Many people think that the killer actually started earlier than that, and there's really no way to document it because nobody knows who this killer was. Right, right. Tracy's older sister, Deonda Kirkpatrick, I said it wrong again. I don't know how you keep saying it like that. The K just keeps disappearing from my brain. Kirkpatrick. <laughs> Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick. No, I said it's good. Yeah, it's Kirkpatrick. I never knew I couldn't say this last name. <laughs> just try saying it. Kirkpatrick. It's better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tracy's older sister, Deonda Kirkpatrick, wrote a letter to her. She described how she made a photo collage with her sister as a Christmas gift for their parents, and this made her realize how much Tracy still lives on. She says, Tracy's compassionate heart and feisty attitude are reflected in her nieces and nephews. She wrote, quote, you have made yourself a part of everything and everyone in this family, end quote. I know. Tracy's family still works very hard to keep her memory alive, and they hold regular vigils at the West Bridge Shopping Center. Every year, they celebrate her birthday by bringing yellow roses or carnations to a cherry tree that they planted at Brunswick High School in her honor. (laughs) You're like melting. (laughs) And so sad and cute at the same time. I know. This case remains unsolved. But somebody knows something. If you have any information regarding the murder of Tracy Kirkpatrick, please contact the Frederick Police Department at 301-600-6219. Oh my god, I just don't even know what to say right now. It was so annoying. It it honestly was. Because I felt like the police were actually being creative by putting it out with the DJs. Um, I mean, for sure, yeah. No, that is definitely it. And to not have anything, it's annoying. Yeah, that's that's why I'm sitting over here like, what the fuck? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I did. It's just. (laughs) Yeah, I know. (laughs) <laughs> okay well i guess that's the end of our story because <laughs> hannah's having a breakdown over here <laughs> uh and words aren't coming out anymore no, they weren't they really were not 
It was just noises. No, because I'm just so like, ah, over here. Yeah, I know. I'm got to. <laughs> Okay, I'm done with you. Shut it down. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. Um, All right. Well, thanks for tuning in for another episode here. Uh, (laughs) Make sure to uh, subscribe on any of your podcast apps. New thing. I added a link. So there's a link inside the description box of every episode. And you click it and you can give us a five star review you if you it. love us. <laughs> tell your friends, tell your cats. Um, bye. bye.